Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and today I wanted to show you something that I think is quite interesting for VR. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Oculus Quest 2. I think it's an amazing device which has completely changed the VR industry. It's affordable, it's accessible, and offers an incredibly immersive VR experience in a neat little package. But I have to confess, as much as I love the Oculus Quest 2 and what it offers, my heart lies elsewhere, and that is with high-end PC VR. You see, I started this channel years ago, before the Quest, Go, and even the Gear VR released, when the only option back then was to connect a headset like the original Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive to a powerful gaming PC, and I've loved it ever since. I love the high-end PC VR experiences, which offer rich detailed environments, vast landscapes, lengthy campaigns, and realistic physics that are only possible with a PC powering them. And I appreciate that a gaming PC for VR is a huge barrier to entry, which is out of reach for many people. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if we didn't need a powerful gaming PC at home? And what if we just needed an affordable headset like the Quest or Quest 2 that was able to connect to a PC in the cloud, running all these PC VR games completely remotely? It sounds like science fiction, something straight out of Ready Player One, but what if I told you that this VR cloud gaming technology was available right now, today. You might not believe me, so let me show you. This is me playing Half-Life Alex on my Oculus Quest 2, completely wirelessly, and all the processing isn't being done on the headset or on my PC at home, but on a shadow PC in a data center in Paris, over 300 miles away. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. So in this video, I'll be talking about the recent shift we've seen in cloud gaming for traditional games. I'll be talking about Shadow, which is the service that I'm using for this video. I'll go through the setup and explain how I got this working with the Oculus Quest 2. And then I'll be testing it out with some of my favorite PC VR games. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my conclusion on whether I think this is a viable option for VR right now. And if I think VR cloud gaming is where we're headed in the future. I hope you find this video interesting, and without further ado, let's dive in. So first up, let's quickly talk about cloud gaming in the traditional sense, as we've seen a big shift recently in the gaming industry. So many companies are now offering a cloud gaming solution whereby you don't need the hardware to power these games at home, and instead, all the processing is done in the cloud. Now it sounds magical, but the cloud in reality is just a huge data center full of computers doing all the processing of these games and sending the video over the internet to your PC, TV, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. We have services like Google Stadia, Nvidia Now, Xbox Cloud, PlayStation Now, Nintendo Cloud, and even Amazon are launching a cloud gaming platform called Luna. Facebook themselves also have recently launched a cloud gaming platform on Facebook, and in recent interviews, they've hinted that VR could be a part of that in the future. So where does Shadow come into this? Well, unlike other cloud gaming platforms, which are walled gardens, allowing you to only access the games tied to their platform, Shadow offers access to a fully remote PC, which you can access from an Apple TV, a tablet or smartphone running iOS or Android, or an old laptop or desktop PC running Windows, Linux, or Mac. As you have full control over this PC, you can pretty much use it for anything you want, such as PC gaming, productivity, video editing, design work, remote file storage, it's totally up to you, and that's what makes the service that Shadow provides completely unique and opens it up to many interesting possibilities, including VR cloud gaming, which I'm going to be showing you in this video. Shadow have been offering this service since 2017, with data centers located in both Europe and the US, providing hundreds of thousands of active users remote access to their PC service. I also want to be clear that Shadow haven't sponsored this video, they just provided access so I could test it out. And the reason why I'm making this video is just because I think the concept is really cool and I think it's worth sharing. If you're interested in a Shadow PC yourself, Shadow offer a few different spec PCs for you to choose from, depending on your needs, which you can pay for monthly or sign up to a yearly contract. The cheapest option is Shadow Boost, which offers remote access to a PC equipped with a 3.4 GHz processor, a GTX 1080 graphics card or equivalent, and 256 GB of storage space with the option to add more storage if you wish. 
The great thing is that you can pay monthly with no contract, and I think the price is pretty reasonable, especially when you consider the price of building a PC with these specs yourself, which could run up into the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. There are higher spec options with Shadow Ultra and Shadow Infinite, but these are currently limited to just the Chicago and Texas data centers at the moment. There's also a huge backlog of users waiting for these to become available in both Europe and the rest of the US. For my testing, I used a Shadow Boost machine and found it fine running the PC VR games that I'll be showing you in this video. So now that you know what Shadow is, I want to explain how I got this set up to remotely play PC VR content on my Oculus Quest 2. Firstly, I logged into my Shadow PC from my own desktop PC. Now, this could be done with an iPhone or a tablet, but using a desktop or laptop, even if it's an older spec machine, would be the best option, so you can use the keyboard and mouse to make navigating around much easier. I installed both Steam VR and the Oculus Desktop app on the Shadow PC and downloaded any games that I wanted to play onto the machine. A nice bonus with Shadow is that this process was pretty fast, as you have access to up to a 1 gigabit per second download speed on the Shadow, even if your own internet speed isn't that fast. Then I installed the most versatile app available on the Oculus Quest Store, which is Virtual Desktop, onto my Quest 2. I then sideloaded the required patch for remotely playing VR content. I've covered this with Virtual Desktop in more detail in other videos on the channel if you want to learn more about it. Shadow are actually developing their own VR app for the Quest and Quest 2 to remotely access their PCs, which is available right now via SideQuest, but it's currently in alpha and Virtual Desktop is still the most reliable method at this time. Once that was done, all I needed to do was install the Virtual Desktop PC client and enable it to run automatically when the Shadow boots up. Here's the settings that I use from both Shadow and Virtual Desktop to get the best experience on my 60 megabit per second internet connection at home. The only important thing I would really stress is that having a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection from your home router to your headset is vital for a smooth VR experience. But after those steps were complete, I was able to remotely play PC VR content on my Quest 2 wirelessly where I live in London from a shadow PC in a data center 300 miles away in Paris. Pretty cool stuff. And now for the fun part, testing it out with some of my favorite VR games. All the gameplay shown in this video was captured directly from the Quest 2, so you can see exactly what I could see in the headset in terms of graphics and performance. One of the key points for this setup to be a smooth experience is low latency. So I wanted to put that to the test straight away by playing Beat Saber on Expert. Now I know I'll get asked in the comments if it's possible to play Expert Plus, but sadly, I'm just not that good. I can't even play Expert Plus on my own PC, so unfortunately I won't be able to answer that question. But I was pleasantly surprised. I was running between 50 and 90 milliseconds of latency, which is pretty good considering the PC powering the experience is so far away, and this is around double the latency I would expect to see when using Virtual Desktop with my own PC at home. I could monitor the latency and network performance using Virtual Desktop's performance overlay, which you can enable in the Virtual Desktop Quest app settings. If the latency playing Beat Saber had been too high, the controller tracking would have been significantly delayed, making the experience unplayable. But despite the occasional hiccup, it ran pretty smooth. Next up, I played Half-Life Alex. I mean, it's the best VR game available right now, and this game alone would be a solid enough reason to go through this setup to get it up and running. I had to dial the graphical settings in the game to a mix of low and medium settings for a smooth experience, but despite that, it still looked pretty great with plenty of detail and atmosphere. Sometimes in dark scenes, I noticed the blacks being crushed by the video compression, but overall, it didn't distract me too much from the game experience. Just like with Beat Saber, every now and again, I would get a spike of latency, which in traditional games being played from the cloud wouldn't be too much of a problem and just result in a dropped frame, but in VR, it can actually make the experience quite uncomfortable and possibly even nauseating for some people. And finally, I tested this setup by playing Star Wars Squadrons using an Xbox One Bluetooth controller paired directly to the Quest 2 headset itself. Virtual Desktop immediately recognized the gamepad and transferred the button inputs to the game without any noticeable delay. And overall, again, this was a great experience and I was really surprised how easy it was to use a traditional gamepad with this setup. This would open this up to be used with other VR flight sim and racing sim experiences that can be played using a traditional gamepad. 
just bear in mind that Squadrons is quite an intense VR game, so it's not something that I would really recommend for VR newcomers, but I have to say, the feeling of piloting a TIE Fighter or an X-Wing in VR, if you have some VR experience, is totally awesome. So here's my conclusion, and I'll do that by answering a question. Is VR cloud gaming ready right now, and would I recommend it? Overall, I would say the experience with Shadow isn't perfect, but it's totally playable, and being completely wireless playing these PC VR games remotely is pretty incredible. I'm still amazed that this actually works. It's obviously not as good as playing directly on an expensive PC in your own home, however for the price that you pay it's a great deal, and I'm excited for people to try what high-end PC VR has to offer, who may have only experienced what's natively available on the Oculus Quest store. Another bonus of this setup is that I could share the virtual desktop login with a friend or family member, and they could log in and play the games on my shadow remotely when I'm not using it myself. There isn't really any other service like this available on the market, which gives you access to a full remote PC to be able to set it up for VR like you can with a shadow PC. But of course with anything, there are some issues. The first and biggest issue with Shadow right now is availability, as demand is extremely high with people waiting a long time for access to the higher end Ultra and Infinite plans. The second is latency. This can be improved by having a fast internet connection at home, a good 5GHz Wi-Fi connection which is close to your VR play space, but sometimes latency can be caused by factors that are completely out of your control. Your geographical location and distance from your closest shadow data center, the stability of your internet connection, peak times of day, ISP throttling, or other family members using up the bandwidth. All of these factors can dramatically affect the latency, which results in a frustrating and uncomfortable VR experience, which could even be nauseating for some people. Ultimately though, if I wasn't in the position that I'm in now where I'm fortunate enough to own my own gaming PC, Despite its flaws, I would absolutely be signing up for a Shadow PC to remotely play PC VR content on my Oculus Quest. And that brings me on to my second question. Do I think that the future of VR is in the cloud? Well, it's clear that cloud gaming isn't going anywhere, and I see a future where we no longer need to own the expensive hardware ourselves and have the option to just pay a monthly subscription service to rent the hardware, which is located in a data center somewhere. The benefits of this are that you don't have that big outlay in buying the equipment yourself, and instead you just pay a small monthly fee. Also, the maintenance of the hardware is the responsibility of the provider, and as technology is evolving so fast, they're also responsible for the upgrades. Any PC owner will tell you that every time a new graphics card is released, it's an expensive time if you want to be on the cutting edge. It is still very early days for both VR and cloud gaming as a technology, I can see a convergence in the future that's inevitable. Standalone VR can only go so far with mobile chipsets, and I think the cloud offers a unique solution to provide people with amazing high-end VR experiences with just an affordable headset and a monthly subscription. Will it be in two years? Will it be in five years? Or maybe even 10 years? To be honest, I have no idea. But as internet infrastructure improves, and with many companies working on this, like Shadow, which already offers a pretty great VR experience right now, I mean, it can only get better from here. So that is Shadow, a service that allows you to play full PC VR content remotely and wirelessly on your Oculus Quest and Quest 2. This was a fun video to make and research, so I hope you enjoyed it and you found it interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts though in the comments down below. Are you interested in Shadow? Maybe you've tried it before, or maybe you're on a waiting list for an Ultra or Infinite plan. Let me know what you think. Do you think there's issues with latency that will never go away and cloud gaming is just a gimmick? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you found it interesting. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.